In part three of the movie, we're going to start adding the detail into the drill. So we got the main portion built. That's a little lifeless looking, even though it's a nice clean design. So we'll start adding the details, and this is what's really going to make this thing kind of come alive. We built all these curves earlier, and now this is where these are really going to come into play. So the first thing we'll do is create this trigger area. So I have this closed curve, and we'll just do a simple solid extrusion. Make sure we go both sides on that. And we'll bring that out and just do a little visual sort of depth. Kind of check on that. I think that looks pretty good. So we're going to take this, and before we do anything with it, we're actually going to put some fillets on it. So I'm still working in my solid tab. I'll click on fillets, and maybe a fillet of two is going to work on this. Make sure that's all we have selected. And let's bump that up just a little bit. Let's try a four and see what we get. Maybe a bit much, we'll try a three. There we go. So that looks good. The reason I went with a three and not a two is I want to have a fillet connecting this to everything. And if I get too small with the fillet, then that limits the size of the fillet I can put when I connect this part. So now we have these two parts. We'll go ahead and union those together. Now they're one part. And let's put our fillet in here. So three is this fillet. So I know a three won't work through there. So let's try a two. And again, we'll just drag a box around this. That looks nice. I'll go back into my side view here. I'm going to draw a curve that we didn't draw earlier. First, let me switch off our uh, isocurve density, clean things up. So I'm going to draw a curve in here that represents the trigger. So it's just going to be a standard control point curve. I want to be careful that I don't get my radiuses too tight. You know, I think something like that will work. So now I have this curve. Because I didn't snap to anything, it built it right on the center line. So I can take this, and we'll just extrude straight. And we're going to extrude in both directions. So now we have a curve that's splitting this way. We'll take this shape, and we're going to do, use one of my favorite Boolean commands. And that's just this Boolean split. So I take the object I want to split. And then just like the standard split command, I pick the cutting object. I hit go, delete that part, and now it's made a solid out of both of these parts. So this is what we're going to do with this one. We're actually going to take this, and we're going to nudge it up a little bit, and nudge it in just a little bit. And then we'll come to the front view, and then we're going to scale it in one dimension. So what we're doing is just offsetting this trigger, and I'll just get any of my center snaps will be fine. And we can just kind of do this visually, it's fine. So something like that. So now we have this trigger stepped in like you'd see in a real product. And because this is stepped in like this, we can actually go ahead and use it to Boolean. So we're going to do this, but we'll do it a little bit differently than we usually do. I'll go ahead and do a Boolean difference. And I'm going to use this. I want to make sure the delete input equals no, which it is currently on mine. And what that'll do is typically when you Boolean, it'll remove that part. We don't want it to remove that part. We want to keep this part because that's our trigger. So let me throw this on a different layer. And we'll temporarily switch that off. So now you can see we've dug just a little hole in here. Let me just measure that, because I want to put a fillet there, and I want to see how large that is. So that's a 0.93, so we can get a pretty good fillet through there. Let's go to our fillets. And I'll do, we'll do a 0.5 fillet. So I'm going to select chain edges. I'll select all of this, and that goes up and selects around. Click again, and I also want to select the outside. And let's take a look at the result. And that looks like that's all going to work for us. I'll hit enter to apply that. So the boolean's completed, and now when I switch on the trigger, if we go and switch on rendered shadows, you'll see that we have 
a turn in here like you'd get on the real plastic if a part was inserted into it. So that little detail really starts to add a lot of depth and a lot of character to this part. So let's go ahead and start finishing the rest of our details here. Go back to shaded mode. First of all, let me hit save just to make sure we're still okay there. And I go into my right view and see what, what is next on my kind of list of surfaces to do. So up in our clutch area here, this is the area where your hand would grasp the object. And this is actually the area that shows the graphic of what setting you're setting to. So these two are really connected and they rotate as one. And here there's a gap between these. So what I'm going to do is take this curve and I'm going to offset the curve. And we'll offset that. Let's try point 0.2. That might be a little small. Point 0.3. I'm now going to take those three surfaces. I'll go to my perspective. And I'll extrude those. And again, I do want to go in both directions here. So it's very hard to see, but we do have two surfaces there. So now I'll take this main section. Go into solids. And I'll do my split. Select those three pieces, delete those. Now I'm going to zoom in, and this little section here I'm actually going to get rid of because we want a little gap between these housings. So let's put some radiuses on this. We're going to have a sort of a generous radius on this area. Maybe we've got to try a two there and see what that looks like. And maybe we'll go with a three. Pretty good, I think. So on this one, we might end up with a, let's say, a 0.5. And it really helps indicate that there's a difference between those materials. And this one's more of a parting line. So we might do something really small on this. Maybe this is like a 0.1. Now select both of those. Apply them. Now if I go into my rendered shadow mode, you see we just get that little faint gap there. We get a bigger gap here where we have an actual part change versus a material change. So let's keep going on this. I'll hit save again. All right, let's do this cutout here. So this is going to be a soft touch material back here when we're finished. So I want to cut that away so we can apply a different texture to it when we render this later. So I can go to Surface, Extrude Curve Straight. Select this object again, do a Boolean split. And again, we'll do a fillet. Maybe we've got a point 0.2 this time. We'll chain edges. Actually, that's going to be a little difficult with these so close together. Go to the right viewport. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll drag boxes around here. I want to make sure I don't grab anything by accident. I think that looks pretty good. Looks like we got everything. Yep, we zoom around. We can kind of see everything there. We'll wait for that to apply. There we go. Again, we'll go to our rendered shadow mode. And we can see that nice little parting line that really kind of pops this thing out and adds some, a nice level of detail to it. Let's throw that on the same layer as the trigger for now. And we'll go to the right here. Now these holes are actually vent holes that are going to go all the way through this object. Before I do that, let me save these off to a different layer. Switch that off. And just kind of clean things up a bit. Let me hide my curves momentarily. So we have that pulled off. And I'm starting to put other things on different layers so I get a better idea of what this is starting to look like as we break it apart. So let me go into my right view. I'll hit ghost it again. Turn on my curves. And let's grab these curves. And I'll grab this curve as well. This is actually going to be our power or our direction reversal. And I'll do a solid extrude planar curve. And we'll choose straight. And we're going to go on both sides here. 
So now, this is way too large for this object, but that's okay, I can just trim that back. So we'll take this main body and we'll do a Boolean difference using these curves here. Make sure I have everything selected. Hit OK. Now those didn't delete because I actually still had delete switched off from last time. So it didn't automatically delete those parts for us. That's okay. So now we've got our holes going all the way through here. On something like this, we probably won't get a shell to work. So what we'll do is we'll put a cylinder in here that will just sort of color a dirty kind of metallic color. And that'll look like the motor inside the housing. Try and get a nice center snap. So something like that. And we'll just kind of bring that back. We're going to move that around again. It's just something to kind of hide in here. And there we go. And we'll scale that down just a little bit as well. So we don't need to really see that part other than there. And that's skewed that. So let me grab this, go to the right view again, and we'll scale that in one dimension. Hit tab to constrain that. Copy equals no. And then we'll just kind of bring that back a little bit. And let's bring that down. Look, we might need to make that a little smaller too. So we'll do a two dimensional scale on that object. Just to bring that in a little bit. There we go. So that looks a little more realistic sitting in there. Go to our rendered shadow mode so we can see that as kind of a motor sitting inside this thing. So that'll do it for this movie. In the next movie, we'll continue adding details and we should be able to finish this up.